Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter Marcham, G3YXZ, and I'm the chairman of the Radio Society of Harrow. Very warm welcome to you all. This evening, we have a talk by Terry Baldwin, G4UEM, and this is about the British Army Klansman equipment. You will have an opportunity later on to ask questions in the live chat facility, or you may email webmaster at g3efx.org.uk. So without further ado, over to you, Terry. Good evening, everybody. And thank you very much, Peter, for the introduction. Um, tonight, I'm planning to give you an overview on the Klansman British military radio system. Um, it, it, it will be a, a general overview of the system. I, I won't be going into great deal of depth of, of, of many of the radios. It, it, it's really just as, as we will see in a few slides um, to give you an idea of, 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 of Klansmen. And here's quite a famous uh, photograph of the Falkland Islands or the Falkland Islands campaign. And here you see the Marines yomping somewhere. And on the back of uh, one of the Marines, you can see a Klansman radio. And I'll cover that a little bit later on during the talk. So this is what I'm planning to uh, cover this evening. We're going to have a little chat about the history. There's, there's a glossary that we need to understand because you, you know what the Army's like with acronyms. Um, we're going to cover the Klansman HF radio sets, VHF radio sets, the uh, the one UHF radio set, batteries and charging, Klansman's control harness and accessories, Klansman audio gear, Klansman accessories, antenna tuning and matching units, a bit about Klansman antennas, um, getting started with Klansman, and we're also going to have uh, some suggested setups and at the end there'll be some links. Right, the history of Klansman. Klansman is the name of a combat, na combat net radio system used by the British Army and it was in use from 1976 to the year 2000. The Klansman system replaced the aging Larkspear radio system. Klansman was developed by the Signals Research and Development Establishment, SRDE, in the mid-60s. The initial design started in the mid-60s, with trials taking place in 1970 to 1972. Production started in 1975, and the uh, systems started entering service in 1978 and onwards. Klansman radio equipment was built by a number of companies, Raykel, Mullard Equipment Limited, Plessy, and the headsets and ancillaries were produced by other companies, for example, Amplivox, Marconi and others. And just as uh, Klansman replaced Larkspear, Bowman have now replaced Klansman, and that really happened in about 1999. Right, here we come to the glossary. And we'll just run through this and you'll, you'll see some of these terms throughout the presentation this evening. PRC stands for Portable Radio Communication. VRC, Vehicle Radio Communications. RT, Radio Transceiver. TURF, Tuning Unit radio frequency, SURF, selector unit radio frequency, DCCU, direct current charging unit, quite obvious that one, like a lot of the others, ACCU, alternating current charging units, GSA, ground spike antenna. And other terms that you might come across is CES, and that's uh, the military term for complete equipment schedule. So that would be a Klansman radio and all the accessories. There's another one, ATR, adapter telegraph radio. RFAT or ARFAT, adapter RF tuning unit. And then we've got another one, TUAAM, tuning unit 
automatic antenna matching. And also we have IBRU, interconnecting box radio rebroadcast unit and DMU, digital master unit. So some, that's some of the terms that we, we will come across um, throughout the presentation. And, and when perhaps you're looking online um, or looking uh, on the various websites that, that, that there are out there on the web to do with Klansman or even on eBay or some of the other uh, places that sell it, you, you will see some of these terms. Right, the Klansman family consists of nine main, main radio units, three of which were carried in vehicles, the other six on the back or across the chest of a foot soldier. The models are designed, here we go, or, or, or designated UKPRC or UKVRC, which stands for United Kingdom, which is quite obvious, Personal Radio Communications and United Kingdom Vehicle radio communications respectively and uh, as you see as you'll see as we go on or, or or on the internet this is normally shortened to prc or vrc right the uh, clansman hf radio sets there are as you can see five in the hf family and the one highlighted in in yellow is is a, a particular set that i've got or a, a set that is probably the most popular. So for the portable radio sets, there's the PRC316, PRC319, PRC320, which is a very, very popular one within the amateur circles, and two vehicle sets, the VRC321. The 321 basically it is a, a sort of a form of the 320 and the VRC322 is then another uh, form of the 321 and we'll see that in a few minutes. So here we have the PRC316. Now th this really was a throwback um, from from the Larkspur days but, but sort of gets included um, in, in, in the Klansman equipment. So it's a PR316, may also be known as an A16, a sort of uh, Larkspare reference. HFCW, and operates from two, from between two to seven megahertz, four watts output. It's crystal controlled, and as we said, not really a Klansman radio, it's a late entry Larkspare, and it was intended for long range patrol use and had a built-in Morse key, as you can see at the bottom here. Next, we have the PRC319. This is an HF and VHF set, CW, upper sideband and data modes, operates between 1.5 and 40 megahertz, and is switchable between 5 or 50 watts, manufactured by MEL Communications. A couple of times you, you, you do see these for sale, but they're not as common as, as the next one we're going to look at. PRC320, this is probably the most common of all the Klansman uh, portable radios that, 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 that's out there. A lot of people... Uh, in, in amateur circles have purchased this and used these. There's lots of YouTube videos about people operating these portable. HF, it's USB, AM and CW. There is uh, There are some modifications out there to add lower sideband. So obviously between, um, if, if you wanted to operate this uh, on 80 meters or 40 meters, you obviously need lower sideband. There is a lower sideband modification for this, operates as we said from 2 to 30 megs. Again, switchable 3 or 30 watts and manufactured by Plessy. Now, basically, the, so, so we've just finished looking at all the portable radios. We now come on to the vehicle mounted radios, and this is a VRC321. And as you can see, the previous one we looked at was a 320. This is a 321, and it's just a vehicle mounted. Um, 
radio similar to the v, v, uh, the PRC320. Again, uh, one and a half to 30 megahertz, well, sorry, 1.5 to 30 megahertz, has its vehicle mounted 40 watts, and again, manufactured by MEL Communications. The next one on, 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 in, in the series is the VRC322. It's basically a, a Klansman 321 that we just looked at with an addition of a 250 watt amplifier <clears throat> and a high powered antenna unit, antenna tuning unit at turf units. Um, so that, that really covers all, all the HF sets. So now we move on to uh, Klansman VHF radio sets. And in this family of, of VHF radio sets, there are four. And as we can see, there are three portable and one vehicle mounted set. PRC349 VHF FM covers 37 to 46.975 megahertz, 0.25 of a watt hour, and the range is is sort of a maximum of two kilometers. Weight weighs about one and a half kilos, and it was manufactured by Raykel. I've actually got one of these. I don't know why I've got one of them because it's no use really if 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 you look at the frequency coverage doesn't doesn't cover anything in the amateur bands but i think probably i was at a rally or or somewhere and uh, and, and and i just bought one just to to sort of to have one so I, but but i've no idea why why i bought it next we move on to um, the prc 350 vhfm 3.6 to 57 megahertz 2 watts range of about five kilometers weighs about 3.1 kilos manufactured by Raykel and this was the um, transceiver that you saw on the back of the marine yomping uh, on, on the second slide um, quite a nice little radio um, and yeah if, if you wanted if there was a couple of you that um, wanted a bit of fun to go out portable using old military equipment one of these on on six meters fm would be uh, would be a bit you know a whole load of fun now we move on to the prc351 this is this is probably of all the vhf radios this is probably one of the most popular uh, it's vhf fm 3.6 to 80 megahertz so now we're covering six meters and four meters four watts output depending obviously on antenna a range of about eight kilometers weighs about seven and a half kilos and manufactured by Raykel. and with the uh, prc351 as you see in the next slide you can add bits and pieces to it to to change how how it's used but here we can see it in in a backpack configuration um, as you as you can see here there will be uh, that's probably a telescopic whip antenna that's the, the 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 main radio here the battery underneath on a carrier and with a with a sort of telephone speaker style handset as the the interface so the, the previous uh, prc351 is something that you'd carry on your back if you wanted something in in your land rover or uh, in a, a, a tent or something you, you you would use the prc351 now it, really the prc351 is, is just basically a prc350 with the addition of a 20 watt amplifier um, so if, if we look at this at, at the bottom is the battery then moving up is the 20 watt amplifier here is the uh, prc350 and it's also fitted with uh, a, a, a surf unit, which is a selective unit RF, um, which is basically um, something that, that allows two of these radios to operate within pro, pro, uh, close proximity to each other. And 
now we move on to the VRC353, which is just a bigger version of the 350 in a, in a larger cabinet uh, with better controls. And, and this would be sort of it fitted in your Land Rover um, or probably uh, in some form of base station. Again, VHF FM, 36 to 80 megahertz, 50 watts output weighs about 22 kilos, and this one is manufactured by Marconi. So now we move on to the only one of the, uh, the UF, UHF radios in the Klansman family. I've never seen one, um, and it's the PRC-344. It's a UHF AM transceiver, covers 225 megs to 400 megs, two and a half watts out. Because this is a, was basically used as a ground to air man pack, it's got quite a bit of range, weighs about seven and a half kilos. And it, it would be used for uh, a foot soldier to communicate with uh, air support. Now we move on to, to batteries and charging. With, um, with the Klansman family, there's a whole integrated system um, of, of, of accessories to cover every sort of military eventuality. All the batteries in general are NICAD 24 volts. There are a couple of chargers. Uh, there's a DC charging unit, as we covered in the, in the glossary, a DCCU. There's an AC charging unit, an ACCU. There's also um, on the PRC320 a hand crank, so you can actually, um, if you're out in the field and you, you're not able to charge your batteries, you can fit a hand crank device. And probably at the end of the, uh, the, the, uh, the talk this evening, I can demonstrate some of these, the, these items. So you can actually uh, hand crank the radio. Um, the batteries normally come, as I said, at the 24 volt NICAD in four amp hour or one amp hour versions. And as you can see on the bottom right, there's a, a four amp hour NICAD battery. Klansman control harness and accessories. There is a whole range of boxes um, that were fitted into, into the vehicles to, uh, uh, you, you know, you can remote operate some of these radios. They're allowed speakers, intercom systems. You can switch between two radio sets. And there was a whole plethora of these things. And quite often you, the, the, these are available on, on, on eBay. And a lot of the, as it says here, a lot of the control boxes, these provided switching and the ability to plug in other audio equipment. Um, Klansman audio gear. There are some lightweight headsets, there are some infantry headsets, there are some handsets, and there are some Prestel switches. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, or as we saw in a previous slide, you can get like a telephone handset, which has got its own built-in PTT and a loudspeaker. Now, uh, it so, so that's all a, a, a sort of a combined unit. If you wanted to use a headset and a microphone, you use the headset, which is the picture on, on the left, and then you would use the um, Prestel switch on the right-hand side, which is a, basically a box with a PTT in it, and connect that to the transceiver. So your headset would go into one side, and the other side would go into the transceiver um, to, to, uh, to give you press to talk. There are other accessories, as we mentioned. There's an inter, uh, interconnecting box radio rebroadcast unit, an IBRU. There's also uh, a digital master unit, a DMU, which is used in conjunction with encryption devices and can provide secure communications on a VHF network. I spoke a little bit earlier on, uh, about the, the uh, PRC350, um, about the SURF unit. And, and at the bottom of the slide, there's a picture of a surf unit. 
and it's used to prevent interference with other nearby radios. It filters out the unused frequency bands by use of a manual control on the front of the unit. So only the frequency in use and those two to it are processed by the, the, the turf and the antenna. It, it, it's to, um, to allow uh, multiple uh, PRC-350s to operate next to each other. Um, it probably in a, a in a command bunker or, or or Land Rovers close together, um, so so they're not into not interfering with each other. Here we have a picture of uh, a turf, a tuning unit radio frequency, and it's really like a, 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 an ATU, uh, you know, but it, it's got the Amer it's got the uh, the Army uh, acronym. Um, so this this is a manual turf, and this would would be used with one of the vehicle mounted radios. Now, no doubt you've probably seen um, some of these lightweight Land Rovers driving around and wondered what what the box on the front wing is. It's uh, not for them to uh, to keep their sandwiches in. It's uh, inside it is a turf, a tuning unit radio frequency which is used to uh, artificially length or shorten an HF antenna. And um, it, in, in the box, there's a, a, a 2M, a tuning unit automatic antenna matching. And it's, it's, it's essentially um, a turf, but for VHF and it automates, it's, it's really, it's an automatic ATU. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to labour this, but it's it, it's it's not that. It's basically an, an auto ATU in the box on the front of a Land Rover's wing. And you normally you, you quite often see uh, see these going along with a whip attached to to the box on the left hand side. Clansman antennas. Now that the, the, the uh, as you can probably imagine, there there are a lot of Clansman antennas right from dipoles. They do uh, a 5.4 meter mast with a vertical wire. They have a long wire, inverted L's, vertical rods, you know, used in conjunction with QAMs. Uh, there's a, a, a VHF pineapple, which is a broadband elevated vertical antenna on an eight meter mast. There's a, a, a if you've got your PRC 350 and, and the 20 watt amplifier, there's, there's no way you really want to uh, have an antenna with uh, radiating 20 watts near your head. So there's a, a ground spike antenna, GSA, and that's something that it, it is basically a little vertical antenna on a spike, and you uh, run that a few feet away from from your PRC 350 and, and operate. And then there's another kit where you can actually, uh, in certain circumstances, elevate that antenna with uh, an elevation kit. And basically that's some, some fiberglass poles that all um, slot together and, and puts the antenna at 5.4 metres. And there's various ground mounted monopoles. So here's, a, here's a, an example of a few of the antennas. The first one, um, is a battle whip antenna. Uh, so for your PRC 350, you can have this uh, telescopic antenna, or they also do a rubber duct type antenna. The middle photograph is, is the pineapple antenna, which is an elevated antenna, and at, the, and at the top of that, a whip antenna fits into it. And to the right, is the ground spike antenna, the GSA, used mainly at VHF, with the PRC 350, 351 or 352. And all you can see is there's a spike. Um, this fits on top of the spike, your coax fits on the bottom of that and you select these whips or the number, uh, any number of those whips to give you the right length of antenna for the band that you're going to operate on or frequency you're going to operate on. Right, so after uh, this, this brief overview of the Klansman system, if you're, you're sort of interested in getting going with, with Klansman, um, I, 
I've, I've looked quickly on eBay, and, and this is a sort of a rough average of, of, of what are you going to pay um, for for Klansman equipment. So for the HF radio, the PRC320, so a complete radio. And for that, you would expect to get the, the radio. You'd expect to get a, a, a carrier, a, a back carrier, um, an antenna, a battery, and you would either get a headset and a Prestel box or a microphone, uh, you, the telephone handset. And roughly that's um, about £285. Um, I, I think prices, when, when Klansman first came or, or came on to the market and, and started becoming popular with amateurs, I think for my PRC320 setup, I paid about £175. So you can see as uh, prices are gradually creeping up of, of, of Klansman equipment. So for a PRC351, which you can turn into a PRC350 by taking off the amplifier. And so for that, you'd expect the, the backpack. You'd expect the PRC350, a battery and the amplifier, plus uh, an antenna. And that would either be uh, a telescopic whip or a uh, rubber duck type antenna. Um, you would be looking at well, and, and, and uh, either a, a sort of telephone handset or a headset and a Prestel box. You'd be looking between about 115 and 135 pounds. And for the small PRC349, which you can only really use on six meters, I think the, the sort of going price for that, and that's really just the just the radio, the battery box, uh, an antenna and a, either a handset or a headset and, and you're looking roughly about 75 pounds for that so here's a couple of examples um, as you can see there's a prc 350 with the whip um, a one uh, 15 volt battery or c cell cassette on the bottom of it and a handset or a headset below you can see a PRC320, the HF radio. So you get the radio, you get what they call a goose neck adapter. So th th this, this adapter here fits into the antenna socket of the PRC320. And then on top of that, you, you put your whip antenna and the, uh, it is a, it's, a, it's on a spring and it is adjustable. So at the moment it's, coming straight out of the set. If you were to lie the set down on the ground, you can then uh, rotate this through either 45 or 90 degrees. And uh, that whip normally is about 2.4 meters long. And you can see on the bottom, there's uh, a 24 volt battery. And again, as we spoke, it can either be used with a headset or a handset. And additionally, uh, with the 320, you, you can use use it with a Morse key and um, of course the army or, or, or for the army was produced a Morse key which uh, you, you can strap onto your thigh or just use on a desk. Here we've got the, the uh, PRC351 so with that you'd expect to get the radio um, a 50 centimeter whip or a 1.2 meter telescopic whip, 24 volt battery, handset and headset. And below is the PRC for 352. You, you'd get the same as that, but as we said, the uh, an, an inter, uh, a 20 watt amplifier, an interconnecting cable, and you'd look to get the ground spike antenna. And here you can see, you know, the two ways that the, the system is used. The 351 is just on the soldier's back with an antenna, very much like we saw that picture of the guy uh, yomping. And here you see the 352 operating um, with, the, with the 20 watt amplifier and the, uh, the ground spike antenna away from the, uh, away from the soldier. 
there's a couple of links um, here if, if, if people want to um, contact me and ask me any questions uh, as, as I said I'm not the world's expert on, on, on Klansmen I'm sure there's people that know far more about it than I do um, you can either contact the, the Harrow Club or you can contact my me either through the Harrow Club or my email address is um, as per qrz.com. Um, one thing I would suggest if you do get interested in Klansmen to join the VMARS, the village, the vintage, I can't say village, the vintage military amateur radio society. Um, very good organization to join. And I think it's only something like £15 a year. Uh, the bonus with, with being a VMOS member is you get a lot of access to manuals. They have a lot of the Klansman manuals that only members can access. Um, Johnson's of Leeds, another supplier of, 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 of Klansman equipment. Another company, the Army Radio Sales Company. And Phoenix Technical Services. There are a couple of... Um, uh, companies that I, uh, when I was Googling for, for Klansman equipment, I uh, I found on the internet. And of course, good old eBay. How did I become interested in, in Klansman equipment? Many, many years ago, when I returned back to uh, contesting, I joined the uh, Luton VHF group. And I met Don, G4LOO. And, and Don really got me interested in Klansman equipment. I, uh, I, I attended the uh, the Bedfordshire Steam Rally with Don one year at Old Warden, and he brought his um, Series 3 Land Rover, and it is absolutely, or it was absolutely crammed with uh, with military equipment, Klansman equipment and all sorts. And um, he, he had me wandering around <clears throat> the Steam Fair um, with a man pack on my back talking back to him, and I can't remember... It was probably I was probably wandering around with a with, with a three fifty or or something on my back, having having loads of fun. And then after that, I caught the bug. I joined VMARS, and I started collecting one or two bits and pieces of Klansmen. Um, when when the pandemic is over, <clears throat> and and the club organise another field day, I'll um, you know it, it would be nice perhaps to bring some of this stuff along so some of you it, some of the people that are interested in it can see it and perhaps operate it we can probably have a bit of fun um, talking to each other across the field on six meters <laughs> and things like that so um uh and occasionally i do i do go out portable w w with the 320 it's it's just a it's just a fun system to um, to play with anyway that's the the end of my presentation uh, at this point i'll uh, i'll hand it back to kirk and hopefully uh, answer some f questions or if anybody wants to see any of the equipment I've, I've got some of it here with me and i can always show it to the camera so over to you kirk thank you i hope i'm coming out Sorry, bear me one second. Right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Terry. That's excellent. Um, I I had no idea that they there were so many different types of it. I kind of assumed there was just sort of like one thing and everybody used it. I should have known better than that, really. Um, I'm going to go to an interval. If you have questions, then um, please type them up in the chat and I'll ask them to Terry in a minute. Um, you're well well, if, if anybody wants to see any of the equipment, I'm quite happy to um to, to I'll put the light on and, and show, you know, just hold it up to the camera. Uh, if anyone's interested in that, just drop a message and uh, we'll sort that out. So uh, we'll see you in a minute after a brief interval.
Hello, everybody. Uh, as, uh, once again, my wonderful script writing of non-existent scripts has helped me hugely to uh, to get us to the to the interval. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. I've got uh, a couple of questions for you, Terry, and you're also going to show us a yeah, few things. Let me just uh, let me just actually get you up on the screen. That'd be helpful. Um, hopefully, I'm a bit louder as well now because I believe I was a bit quiet before. Um, quick question from Chris first off, um, and I, I guess. Uh, you showing them may also spark a couple more questions as well. Chris wonders how easy they are to maintain or adjust and retune, sort of how much maintenance is involved in them. Um, because they're sort of built to a military spec, they sometimes it's, it's like everything electronic. Um, <laughs> things do go wrong. But you find that they're all built in sort of die cast boxes uh or you know cast aluminium boxes they're, they're, they're very sort of tough well you know that they've been built to survive a squatty so um <laughs> it's, it's not like your sort of yesu handheld or your whoopson handheld the, these really are you know are, are are designed to 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 sort of be used and abused really but like everything else with that, that's electrical things do go wrong but uh you know touch wood that the, the the stuff that i've got has been fairly reliable there there, there are a couple of um, internet forums where you know if, if something's gone wrong there's always plenty of advice about and on ebay you know there, there are always uh, modules available uh, and and the, the, as with anything for for the army, it, everything has been over designed. Re it really has over. You know, if if it says four watts, it's probably uh, capable of eight watts. And uh, and it, the, the, there is the whole you know books on on on, on you know the, the the military produced or or the companies that produce the radio for the military produce numerous books on on, on how to repair the stuff. So that there is a lot of information out there. I'm guessing also these are sort of 60s, 70s designs, so they're not going to be too sort of IC heavy. They're mainly going to be discrete components and stuff, aren't they? Because, I mean, if, it was, if this was a 90s product, then it would be impossible to repair it. Yeah, you know, you, I, I, I think they are sort of fairly repairable. I have not actually had, had to take one apart, but, you know, as we'll sh show later on, everything is, you know, I, I think you could probably throw it throw it around a lot and the thing will still work afterwards because it's, it's it's built to to be in that type of environment yeah. environment being bounced around in a land rover and still work you know in, in, in it's, it's no good taking a radio to battle and, and then uh you know you drop it and it stops working it's it's not that sort of thing you know it's um it, it's built it's well it's it, <laughs> as i keep saying and i, and I do apologize for this, if there's any sort of ex-military personnel listening it it's built to be squatty proof. Hmm. So, are these still in use, or is it still a design still in use? No, this, this is this has been replaced by Bowman now. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So, because I mean, most of the companies that manufacture it don't seem to exist anymore. So, <laughs> 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 all, all disappeared over the years. Yeah. That's um, right. Okay. Uh, do you want to show us uh, a few bits, Terry? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be a bit difficult for me. Because um, I can't see what I'm doing. Yes, unfortunately, uh, the reverse camera isn't working great today for some reason. Okay. So can you see what I'm holding up? Yes, we can see right. to, your, to your doors on the other side and to your... You've can got you quite that? a bit of room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This is, is the, 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 the 349, which I bought, which is no good to man or beast. So that's... That's the, 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 the small 349. So, next one we move on to is the 350. Remember we spoke about the 350 on the on the back of the guy yomping into the Falklands? So there's the 350, six meters FM with the battery box. This, this, this has a battery box that you can put, uh, I think there's C-cells in. Can you just lift, and, it, lift it a little higher, please? Thank how's you. that? That's How's that? It's, it's hard that I can't see what I'm doing. It's yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, you know, here's the, the sort of the, I, I call it a telescopic whip. It, it sort of is, if you know what I mean. It's a, it's a, 
So that's that's the whip antenna for that. Oh, yeah. As I said, um, what I can do is um, perhaps come to the club, or even if if, if there's interest, uh, I can even come to the club and redo the talk again with the bits and pieces. Um, so here is is the, uh, the the one we spoke quite a lot about the uh, the three five one or the 352, depending on, on its configuration. So that's the basic radio. Then onto it, you clip the battery. It's not as easy to, it's, it's uh, a little bit. So there's the battery. Then we, we spoke briefly about the sort of the whip antenna. So there's the whip antenna. Then all you'd need to add is a headset like that. And this Prestel box like that. Or you could use it. With a, uh, a telephone headset and speak and built-in speaker with the PTT on the headset. So the nice thing about all the accessories. So if you, you know, if you bought yourself a three five one, um, all the audio accessories that you've got, like the headset, the Prestel box, the telephone handset, will work with all your other uh, clansman equipment. So, and I, I have. Actually, haven't got the uh, the little twenty five watt amplifier that goes with this, unfortunately. So I'm sorry about that. And we spoke about the selective unit, the surf unit. That's that's what that is, and that just bolts on top like that. Not really any use for amateur radio uh, use, but it, I, I just got it because I it was either with it when I bought it, or I, or I probably bought it for completeness. So that's, that covers that. I, with the, uh, the PRC320, oh, I haven't put the battery on it because it's quite heavy to lift. So here's your, here's your PRC320, which is the, uh, the HF antenna. There's the gooseneck neck, um, antenna connector on the side, which is a bit difficult doing this one-handed, which will turn through 45 degrees if you see, 45 degrees. Or, or 90 degrees, but if I loosen that. And into that, I actually haven't got the antenna here. Uh, an antenna will uh, will fit into that. Um, in various configurations, either a wire antenna or it, in, in this configuration, it's for um, a sort of whip antenna. The battery fits underneath here with the, these clips. It's quite heavy to uh, keep holding that up. And we spoke about the hand generator. So if you're, um, you're out in the field for a long period of time and, and there isn't a main supply and you can't charge your battery, you clip this underneath your, uh, your 320, clip a one amp battery or a, or a four amp hour battery on there. And just wind the handle and generate uh, generate some oh, current. So you're using that to charge the battery, are you? Yeah, I, I think yeah, it, it's either to charge the battery or to run the radio. It's um, I've never used it. It's one of those things I've never ever used. It feels um, like you wouldn't get much um, you wouldn't get much power out of it, would you, really? I, but... I, I, I think that they've been common. I, my, my dad um, he, he's in his sort of late eighties now, and he did his national service, and he went in the signals. And he remembers having a, a hand cranked generator, not not like that, but but something like that. So I'll have to actually wind it, wind the handle around, and see uh, see what sort of voltage it generates, and, and yeah. see, measure the current as well. Um, or, or there's probably some information about it on the web. Um, but yeah, he, he remembers using one of those uh, hand cranked when when they're out in the middle of the field to um, 
to power the, the, the radio set he was using. Here's the antenna for the uh, PRC320, obviously a longer antenna. Uh, some of the other accessories I've probably sort of mentioned, you, you know, you get like dipole kits um, or long wire kits, and, and they're all color coded. You can see all the little tie wraps indicating you know, how much you unwind this to what frequency you want to use. It's, it's all ever so clever stuff. And um, for those of you keen on uh, on CW, there you go. A little Morse key that you can uh, strap to your leg. I'm not sure what my Morse would be, uh, be like that. So that's uh, plus, uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, there's, you, 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 the, 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 there's, a speaker um, that the, the, I'm actually charging one of the batteries as, as, as we speak. They do bags to put all the all the accessories in. There's a, a, a dedicated rucksack for for the radio uh, for the, the you know for the 350 or the 320 that you can put it in camouflage backpack if that's what you're interested in. So loads and loads of accessories that that haven't really you know it, it's just so much to cover. Cool. Thank you. Um, Peter says, uh, Peter Marcham says it's to charge the battery, the, um, the hand cranks, it charges the battery up. Yeah, it's only a one amp hour battery, Peter. Yeah. So I, I was, I, I've no idea how long you would have to, uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I did read that it will, it will, if, if, if you haven't got, and you haven't got a battery, it will power the radio, uh, just on receive only. So, you know, if you were waiting for, for some important message somewhere and, 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 you know, it, 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 I think there's enough of it to power the radio on receive. So, yeah, loads of information out there, really. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no more questions, but I think everyone would love to see them up at the uh, at the at the shack yeah, one sometime. We, we, so. can either, we can either do an, a, a sort of a cut down version of this at the shack. Uh, we we can, or I can perhaps bring something up and we and we can, you know, have a wander around with with a with a handheld and and uh, or. Uh, and, and you know something like an eight one uh, eight one seven or six meters, and somebody run, wandering around with either the three fifty or the three five one, uh, walking around the field. So yeah, <laughs> lots of things we <laughs> yeah, lots of things we can do. Cool. Thanks very much, Terry. Um, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, I think everybody enjoyed it from what I can see in the chat. So yeah, normally I, I'm normally on HR, or as I said, my email address is as as per qrz.com. If you if you want to email me and ask any questions, or you know, if you catch me on the air on HR, ask me a question, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. So I hope you've all enjoyed this evening, and um, I hope it's perhaps sparked an interest in, in clansman equipment i suppose you will be on ebay after my talk <laughs> <laughs> looking up the prices of of clansman equipment yeah that's what that's what um that's what usually happens with these things people start talking about them and then the price goes up by yeah that's that's the unfortunate thing so yeah um yeah. don lamb's asking will the slides be available later certainly the video will be available later um i can always make the slides available if you want to um yeah, stuff contact, about contact me by email, and I'll um, if if it's not too big, I'll email it to you. Or um, if you're a club member, I'll you know we can arrange for me to be at the club, and I'll I'll bring bring it on the memory stick or something, or you know whatever. There's there's more you know there's there's more than one way to get the the presentation if you're interested. Cool. Thanks very much, Terry. Okay, it's my pleasure. Um, it wasn't as bad as I thought, and I might do another one. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, thanks very much, everyone, uh, for being here this evening. Um, our next field day, I don't think we have anything planned super soon. Uh, the next field day will be back in late May, which will be after the restrictions have lifted, obviously. That means we'll be able to have 30 people around rather than six, which will be uh, much more enjoyable, I'm sure. Um we still have a talk at some point from Bletchley, hopefully, uh, or not Bletchley, the Museum of Computing. I'm sure you're all aware of the thrilling excitement as to which one is which, um, and it's not the Bletchley one. Um, and with that, I'll leave you. Um, the stream will still be open for another 20 minutes or so if you want to chat, and uh, we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks.